let's now look at two very simple ways of measuring lifetime in a solar cell. The first is the open circuit voltage decay and the second is the reverse recovery transient. Let's first look at open circuit voltage decay. What does it mean? Okay, think of a solar cell. You know that when light is shining on the solar cell, it will generate some voltage. What would happen if the light is suddenly turned off? Well, what would happen is that the carriers which have been generated due to the light eventually will die out and as they die out, the open circuit voltage will decay. How do, how do these carriers die out? They die out by recombination and therefore if we can measure how the open circuit voltage decays with time after the light is shut off, we'll be able to tell what the lifetime is or we'll be able to calculate what the lifetime is. So that's the basis of the open circuit voltage decay measurement. The question is now, how can we devise an experiment in which the light is turned off very quickly. For example, could I have a mechanical shutter, the light is shining on my solar cell and then I quickly close the shutter and the light goes off. Will that work? The answer is no, it won't work because the lifetime of the carriers in a solar cell are typically of the order of microseconds and the time taken to close a mechanical shutter will definitely be of the order of fractions of a second. So it will not be able to capture that very fast turn off or the very fast uh, decay of the carriers if I were to do a mechanical shutter. So what's the way we can do this? Well, there are various ways and of course in that setup which I had showed you some time ago, you, people use very expensive ways of doing it but actually you can do it in a very simple way. That is to use a light emitting diode to turn off the light very quickly. Fortunately, a light emitting diode turns on and off very fast. So if I have a light emitting diode shining, shining light on a solar cell, I can turn it off very quickly and thereby capture the open circuit voltage transient. So that's the first thing which we will do and that's the open circuit voltage decay experiment. The second experiment will be the reverse recovery transient. This is actually a well-known experiment for all diodes and what here we would do is to really look at how a diode when it is forward biased and then switch to reverse bias, how long it takes to turn off. I'll draw a very simple circuit here which shows the kind of circuit we will be using in the experiment. I'll apply a square voltage, positive voltage VF, negative voltage VR, put it into the diode which is the solar cell and simply put a resistor and I will measure the voltage across the resistor as my output voltage. The voltage across the resistor is really proportional to the current flowing through the circuit. What happens in a case like this? Well, when the, positive, when the voltage is positive at plus Vf, a positive current will flow through the diode. Current will flow through the resistor and I'll get some current which I will call IF flowing. I'm now plotting the current versus time. Here's the current flowing through the solar cell as a function of time. What happens when the voltage goes to a negative voltage VR? Well, initially what happens is that because of the, because the diode really acts like a capacitance, this change of voltage is transmitted through to the resistor out the current goes negative to some value of approximately of value minus IR and now what happens is until until the diode is turned off the current stays negative and then only gradually decays to zero. So here's a reverse recovery transient and how long does it take to recover back to zero or how long does the current 
remain at this value minus ir well that's the time we will call the storage time what is the storage time dependent on well again in this case also the storage time does depend upon the lifetime because the larger the lifetime the more time it will take for the diode to switch off for all of those excess carriers to be removed so the larger will be the storage time ts but in this case there's another thing also and that is the values of if and ir also determine how quickly the diode turns off the reason is that this reverse current ir actually pulls out the charge in other words there's now two ways of removing the charge firstly by recombination and secondly by the reverse current which pulls out the charge and takes it away so both of these things the uh, lifetime of the excess carriers as well as the reverse current and for that matter the forward current all contribute to the storage time ts and in fact you can derive this equation the storage time ts is tau 0 which is the lifetime ln of 1 plus if by ir so this is a nice experiment to perform by varying if and ir and measuring storage time we can actually plot uh, ts versus ln 1 plus if by ir the slope will give us tau 0 you can see that the kind of experiments we are now looking at the open circuit voltage decay and the reverse recovery transient are really very simple experiments you just need a simple pulse generator and a very simple oscilloscope to capture this transient and you could actually set up these two experiments uh, total cost of a few uh, 100 rupees really for the solar cell and the led and probably a few thousand rupees when you include the equipment that's a pulse generator and the oscilloscope which is required so these two very simple methods allow us to at least estimate the lifetime very quickly and very easily also because there are two methods we will be able to compare the two results of the lifetime which we get and that will tell us what the and that will tell us whether the experiments are working okay and the two values of tau 0 should be approximately the same so let's now go and have a look at the experimental setup and see what is happening okay so here is a solar cell it's a solar cell made by bharat electronics limited and here is the led it's a small led bank you can see that it's being the leds are flashing on and off as controlled by the pulse generator if i change the frequency of the pulse generator i can increase the frequency of the flashing what i'm going to do really for my open circuit voltage decay now is to adjust the frequency to what i need put the led bank in close proximity to the uh, solar cell and then try and measure the open circuit voltage decay the solar cell is just open circuited and i can measure the open circuit voltage decay okay what we've done now is put the solar cell and the led in here the led is being driven by this simple function generator at about 2 kilohertz the solar cell is just open circuited i'm taking the output voltage here and feeding it into the scope okay here here is the input voltage which is driving the solar cell it's a just a square voltage going from about 0 volts to about uh, 10 volts or so that of course at the input of the circuit i do have a resistor here about a 100 ohm resistor which limits the current but it drives the leds and the leds are flashing on and off as we had seen some time ago i'm measuring now the output voltage here is the output voltage you can see that the output voltage is decaying with time slowly as the carriers which are generated finally disappear you can see incidentally that when the light turns on here is the light turning on when the voltage goes positive when the light turns on the transient is really very fast because the carriers get generated very rapidly lifetime really does not come into the picture there 
but now when the light goes off which happens on this transient you can see that the output voltage which is the open open circuit voltage decays rather slowly and that's the open circuit voltage decay which we have to capture so by looking at this output voltage we can estimate what the uh, slope of this open circuit voltage decay is and from that we can measure the lifetime if i look at this i should measure the slope in the initial part of the uh, characteristic and it is approximately if i look at this it's at about uh, 0.2 volts per division so it's about 0.2 volts just trying to measure the time it's 0.2 volts and this is about it's about 100.1 millisecond per division or 100 microseconds per division so this is about 90 microseconds so the initial the slope initial slope is about 200 millivolts upon divided by 90 microseconds and we'll use these data to calculate the lifetime okay we can uh, we know that the lifetime is given by this equation you can try to derive it not very difficult to do tau zero is kt by q that's a thermal voltage into 1 upon dvoc by dt dvoc by dt is the slope of the uh, of the transient which we have just measured so in our case kt by q of course is 25 millivolts 1 upon dvoc by dt we have just measured it turned out to be 200 millivolts in 90 microseconds so i would write it down like this so that this becomes 25 millivolts into 90 microseconds upon 200 millivolts i can cancel this out this goes eight times so you can see i get about 11.2 microseconds so according to this measurement the lifetime of the carriers in this solar cell is about 11.2 microseconds let's now compare this measurement with uh, the value of tau zero which we will get from the reverse recovery transient okay here is the simple reverse recovery transient setup basically i have a function generator which is feeding a square wave which is captured here uh, to the circuit which is the solar cell and the resistor it's driving that circuit and the output voltage which is the voltage across a resistor and therefore the current flowing through the solar cell is captured here you can see that when the input is positive there is some positive current IF which is flowing when the input goes negative the output current goes negative goes through the transient and then comes to zero it's not very easy to find out where is exactly uh, the storage time but we will try to estimate this the best as we can for that let me do this i will just change the oscilloscope settings a little bit let me make sure first of all where is the zero of this here is the zero let me put the zero at this point now let, let's put the zero here here is the zero I'll put the zero here that will make it convenient okay so in this case you can see that here was a zero here is a pretty large forward current here is a large reverse current the value of the resistor is 100 ohms i'm measuring the voltage on 2 volts per division so you can see that this is about 2 4 about 4.8 volts divided by 100 ohms so that gives me about 48 milliamps is the forward current so let me write that down in this case reverse is about 1.6 volts divided by 100 that's 16 milliamps what i can now do is to change if and ir and try to see how the storage time changes 
for this particular case how much is the storage time well i estimate it to be approximately half a division year and half a division because this is at 50 microseconds per division half a division gives me about 25 microseconds so i'm writing down 25 microseconds now i can change if and ir the easiest way to do that is to change the dc offset of the function generator so for example i can put it at about four volts which gives me 40 milliamps in the forward direction the reverse is about Two point four volts. That's twenty four to two point three volts. So say twenty three uh, milliamps. And the storage time you can see has reduced a little bit. My estimate is that it has gone down to about twenty microseconds. i admit that it's not very easy but you'll have to do the best as you can change the offset voltage even more the forward current is now 24 milliamps the reverse current is now about 40 milliamps and the storage time has now become i would say about 15 microseconds or so and then reduce change the if and ir even further okay in this case now the forward current is I have to adjust the level to trigger it. The forward current is about 12 milliamps. The reverse current is about 54 milliamps, and the storage time now has become very small, at about 10 microseconds. So these are the data which we have got. Now we can just uh, try to see what results we get from this data. okay so here is the data we have got if and ir we have taken from the oscilloscope and of course the storage time ts also we have taken from the oscilloscope i have now calculated if by ir and ln of 1 plus if by ir so this completes our data and the best thing now to do is to plot ts the storage time versus ln 1 plus if by ir and uh, uh, the slope of this plot should give us tau 0 let's do that okay here is the plot of the storage time ts versus ln of 1 plus if by if from the table i've plotted the points here you can see that it's a reasonable straight line as expected from the theory i've got the straight line here and here is the slope i'm calculating and the slope turns out to be 13 microseconds divided by 1 and that turns out to be about 13 microseconds so from this i get the value of tau 0 to be about 13 microseconds compare that with the value which we got for the uh, from the open circuit voltage decay which was 11.2 microseconds you can see that these two are comparing quite well with each other given the simplicity of these two experiments 
it is really uh, very good that the values of tau we get by the two methods are within about 10 to 20 percent of each other and that gives us confidence that the value of lifetime that we are measuring is quite correct. Uh, it should be noted that these are typical values about uh, some tens of microseconds, uh, typical values which we would see for a solar cell. So that also actually confirms that our measurements are probably correct. So this completes our experiment now. Okay, this experiment has to do with the measurement of lifetime in a solar cell. The lifetime is one of the most important parameters for a solar cell and basically it tells us how rapidly the excess carriers, the electrons and holes generated by the shining light, how rapidly they can recombine. Why is this important? Well, even a simple qualitative understanding of the operation of a solar cell tells us why lifetime is important. For example, just imagine I have a solar cell, light is shining on it. What is the effect of the light shining on the solar cell? Well, first of all, of course, light shining on the solar cell, what it does is generates electron and hole pairs. As light continues to keep shining, of course, the holes and electrons keep getting generated, but this process cannot go on indefinitely. Otherwise, the number of electrons and holes in the solar cell will become infinitely large. What happens obviously is that the generation of electrons and holes is actually, <coughs> is actually uh, reduced by the recombination which takes place. So as the carriers are getting generated, they are also recombining. The recombination annihilates the electrons and holes and eventually causes them to reach a steady state where the generation and the recombination just match with each other. In a solar cell, would I like the lifetime of the carriers, the lifetime by lifetime I mean how long does it take for the electrons and holes to recombine, would I like this lifetime to be large or small? The answer is I would like it to be as large as possible because if the lifetime is large, then the recombination does not take place very easily. In other words, when the carriers are generated, they stay alive for a long time and it, this gives a chance for many more carriers to be generated. If more carriers exist in the solar cell, I'll get larger currents, short circuit currents, larger open circuit voltages. So I would like to have as large a lifetime as possible in a solar cell. Of course, there are some other types of devices. For example, think of a switching transistor where I want the lifetime to be very small because I want things to switch back and forth rapidly and that could only happen if the lifetime is small. But anyway, coming back to the solar cell, you can see that the lifetime is important and I must try to increase the lifetime in the solar cell to get better and better performance of the solar cell. So measurement of lifetime becomes very important whenever I'm fabricating a solar cell. And of course, one of the key, uh, one of the key parameters which the manufacturer of the solar cell will keep monitoring is indeed the lifetime in the solar cell. So lifetime measurement is important and this experiment really will tell us how to measure the lifetime in an uh, existing solar cell. There are actually many fairly expensive and complex equipments available to measure the lifetime. I'll show you some of them, two of them here. Here are two lifetime measurement setups. Can either use, if you look, see this, it's basically the photoconductance lifetime tester and it has an optional SUNS VOC stage and I can measure the lifetime in a wafer or in a fabricated solar cell using this fairly sophisticated setup. Unfortunately, the problem with this is that it's sophisticated, but also it's quite expensive. This costs about 20 lakhs or so, and therefore it's really not very easy to replicate uh, when I want to get some simple estimate of the lifetime. 